quite some time ago, I made a video where I reviewed this inexpensive Chinese folding box style wood stove. I had quite a lot of comments on it. So what I have done is I've looked at all those comments and I've compiled them into useful recommendations for this video. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, a couple of things. I'm not gonna go into all the specifications for the stove in this video, but I will be putting a link to that original video so that you can go back and see what I had to say about it there. What I really wanna focus in on are the recommendations that I received from viewers, as well as a few things that I picked up myself that I can show you now to improve the performance of this stove. Okay, right off the top, We've got to get this out of the way because I, I just don't know how else to address it. This is probably the one comment that I received the most often and I have yet to figure out how it's supposed to work. I had said that these were lift handles on the sides of the wood stove and I, I still think that they are lift handles. I think they get in the way and are unnecessary to the design but I had numerous viewers tell me that what their true purpose was, was for locking the grate on top of the stove. Let me grab the grate for the stove. Now here's the grate that came with this one. And I cannot, for the life of me, figure out how that's done. Um, for all the people that rec or suggested that that's what it was for, nobody could explain to me how it was done. And I could not find it in any of the reviews in videos online for this stove as well. Uh, I'll tell you, it frustrated me to the point of trying to figure it out because I assumed if so many people said it would work, it just have to work. I finally, I actually had one viewer call me a liar because I said it could not be done with this stove. Now, the only thing I can think of is that this stove is one of the earliest generations. I see a number of them on AliExpress and Amazon now, branded under a great deal of names, that may be of slightly different design. In fact, there are some significant differences from this generation to these, that later generations but there is just no way that I can get this to function as a set of hooks to hook it on. And here's what I'm saying. Now, you're going to notice as I bring it up close that I did cut notches. We'll talk about those notches in a minute. But this handle just does not reach up high enough. Even with those notches there, it's still not close enough to touch the bars here and hook it in place. So I'll open it up though. I'm not saying it can't be done. I'm just saying I can't figure out how it's done. So if someone can tell me clearly in written word or direct me to a video that shows it being done, then I will do that. And if I can figure it out, I'll come back and make yet another video on how it's supposed to be done with this stove. Okay, now with that out of the way, let's go through a list of uh, improvements that I've made to this stove, or at least changes I think are improvements from the original design. All right, just before I get started with showing you the modifications I made to the stove, just a couple of things I want to say. First off, wherever I possible, I will give credit to the viewer who gave me that suggestion, and I'll do so by putting it on the screen. Uh, sometimes, in some cases, there were multiple people who gave me the same suggestion. And when I was going back through all the comments, I wasn't able to find all the people who gave me the same suggestion. But what I want to do right now, is just so I don't miss anybody, is thank everybody who commented on that video and gave me suggestions for improving the stove. Now, the other thing I want to mention is that from what I'm seeing now on Amazon and AliExpress is a lot of the modifications that I made to this stove are incorporated into the design of the current generation of these stoves. Those. In fact, I am going to put a link in the video description to one such site on Amazon for the branded stove under the name Red Camp. And that seems to be a fairly common uh, brand name for a lot of outdoor products that come out of China. They actually offer three different sizes of this stove. I'm not sure, quite sure where this fits in. I think it would be the medium size. I know there is at least one larger than this. And you know, if I looked around, you may, I may find that there's even more sizes, four or five different sizes sizes of this general design. Okay, so with that, let's get started. So here is the second most common comment that people made for improving this stove after, of course, trying to attach the, the grill with the, these little handles, and that is to drill holes in the sides of it. Now, you can see what I've done here is I've drilled three set of holes. They're spaced one inch apart, 
And the idea is that you can take stainless rods like this and run them through the holes, and I'll do so now and to show you what the benefit of that is. It was not difficult to drill them, I just gave it a quick tap with a center punch to uh, mark the point that I wanted them to go in and then a cobalt drill and the metal isn't that hard that it couldn't be drilled through. So yeah, not too difficult to do that. But as I say, from what I see, all the new generation of stoves have these already included. So what's the benefit? So what I can do now is I can put in another ash pan or fire grate inside of the stove, raise it up from where the original is way down here so that I can bring the fire close to the top. So if I only want a small amount of flame and without having all kinds of wood inside of it, then of course that's what I can do. The other thing is, well, there are actually two other things. Another one is that I can use these to mount an alcohol stove and then bring it very close to the top. And with the right spacing of these holes, you can get it to that one to one and a half inch sweet spot for the pot gap between the top of the, or the alcohol burner and the stove itself. I made one mistake in doing this though. You can see how close the those bars are. So what I can do is I can set a trangia on top of those bars, but I didn't look forward far enough to suggest that I should space the holes out a little wider this way so that the trangia can go between the bars and then hook on by its lip like it does on the firebox stove. So a bit of a miss here and I'm not sure if the ones that you can purchase now have that as a feature or not. It doesn't stop me from using the trangia, especially when I show you the next thing that I did to improve the stove and that is make another grate for it, another fire grate. So this came out of one of those grilling baskets that you can buy at a lot of hardware stores. They, you know, they're like a kind of a flat walk. I don't know, it's the best way to describe it. Stainless steel for grilling vegetables and the like up on your barbecue. Uh, this is what the bottom looks like. So all I had to do was cut it to the right size. And now I can drop this into this uh, stove at any level I want, including right down on top of the original fire grate. Why would I want to do that? Look at the size of the holes. It was one of the comments I made in the original video that the holes on this are way too big. Now, I know airflow is everything to a good working stove and there is more than enough airflow, but everything falls through this. So one thing you cannot do with the stove unmodified is you cannot use wood pellets. The other thing is live hot coals will drop down through. It also requires you to use fairly good sized sticks or pieces of wood down inside there. So a smaller fire grate or at least one that you can put in and take out when you want to would be a big improvement. And that's what this is all about. Not only that, I can put this in at any level like I just did with those rods there if I wanted to bring it close to the top. And this works well for pellets. So it's, they're a little tiny bit big, the holes in this for pellets are a little bit bigger than the pellets themselves. But what I find is if you pour your pellets in on top of this plate, they will bunch up and prevent, you know, kind of grab onto each other and prevent them from falling through. You might get a few fall through, but very, few, very few. You do get a few hot coals falling through, but if you've got this set up on a safe surface and you're using the ash pan that came included with it, then it's not an issue. And the last thing I'll say about it is, just like in the original video, this will slide down inside when you go to fold the stove. There's enough room for this to be in there like that. So that's definitely a worthwhile improvement for anyone to do is to find some type of metal that has holes in it that are smaller than that. It wouldn't be hard to find something smaller than that. And it will go a long way to improving the versatility of this stove along with these rods. If you don't have the holes drilled for the rods, highly recommend you do so. Now, here's the other thing I... I made comment in my original video is that this door on the side kept falling open. And the reason is, is that it was just loose and rattly. It's just a, a split ring and a little, well, you'll see the knob in a second. Well, let's just open it up. You can see there how that's supposed to catch onto the lip up here to keep it closed. And I, I found as I drop sticks in, occasionally it would hit this, turn it, and then the thing would just drop open. So the easy fix for that was just to bend it a little bit. Actually, I just took a pair of pliers and very gently bent it. And now it will lock in with no rattle, no looseness. And what I also find is that it's closer now to the side of the stove that I'm not getting flames coming out the sides because you don't want flames coming out the sides. You want them coming out of the top. Now, th the purpose of this door, and I, a lot of people did mention this and they're absolutely right on. I just don't think it's as well designed as it could be. The idea of this door is that you can now open this up and feed long sticks in on top of the fire grate to keep the fire going. You don't have to feed wood in from the top. That's true, 
but that's a big hole. That is a huge hole. And what I found is that a lot of the heat was escaping out through this hole. And uh, yeah, so yes, you can do that and it works. I just don't find that it's really efficient to do so. I find that just dropping more and more fuel in through the top while the sides remain closed up is a little bit better way to go. Now I've done it both ways. I will use it both ways. It's just that I find you get more efficiency out of the stove if you feed it from the top. Now, one of the other things that we talked about, I already mentioned, is that the fire grate can kind of slide off. Not a big deal, certainly, but that why not improve it if you have the opportunity? So I did. This is also came from one of my viewers, just my Dremel tool, and I put notches wherever this would match up and then drop into the notches and it fits on there snug just below the surface and now that grill is not going anywhere. So that works very well. That was just, that was an easy improvement. Another improvement, and I had shown this actually in the original video, was to create pot spans to give you some clearance off of the top because, well, that grill on top, if you use it with a small pot, smaller than the opening of the stove itself, will allow air to flow out around it. Well, that works. Uh, if you're using something the size of the stove or larger, then there's no way of creating a pot gap unless you put a set of pot stands across. These are the bars that my friend Wayne gave me that came with this stove. Actually, I shouldn't say came with it. He made them and notched the stove to put them in. So his idea was to create little notches on either side of the stove. And if you're wondering, yes, the stove has warped quite a bit. Not the end of the world. I mean, it's still functional. It's just it's more a little bit of annoying at times. There. All right. So you can see that these are the bars that he gave me. And the clearance is not even quite a quarter of an inch off of the top. It's not bad. It does help. It does make an improvement. But the, to improve it even further was just so easy. Uh, you've seen me talk about using these a number of times in videos. These are stainless steel rulers that I buy at uh, Walmart for a buck a piece and with these you can create uh, pot stands for virtually any stove. So these put these ones in. This is actually the half of uh, two different rulers this time in this case and I think it's this way. Is it that way? Or like this? Nope, it's the other way. Get it into the notch and it's because of this warping and the little challenge that creates for putting these pot stands in. It's one of those things I recommend you do before you light the fire because it'll be a challenge to do afterwards. Now look at the clearance I have on top of the stove. Dramatic difference. This is what I would use for a large pot or pan on top of the stove. Something that's larger than the opening is across because it, that's where you really need that extra height. Okay, what else has been done to the stove? So there's not a lot more that can be done to the stove. One of the things I've discovered is if you put an alcohol stove on the original fire grate in the bottom and you put those rods through the sides and your pot is smaller than the diameter or the opening on the top, then you can put your pot down inside and you've created a windscreen to, to protect the stove from all the way around. Now, that's a small benefit. I don't know how often people would use that. And this one, maybe even least, but it was just worth mentioning just the same. You can kind of create a how should I say, a lantern out of this. If you put a candle or something on the fire grate here, you have an open door, it'll give light forward. Now mind you, look how dirty that is inside, so it's not gonna reflect a whole lot forward, but you do get a bit of a lantern that is protected on three sides from the wind. Okay, so what I would thought I would do at this point is put the fire grate, the new one, in at a preferred height, load it up with wood pellets, and just show you that how well this can work with wood pellets. All right, top-down view of the stove with that grate inserted. It's center set of notches for this. I'm not going to load too many pellets in. I have a few cups of pellets here. I'm just going to put a small pile in, see if I can put them in the center here a little bit. I've got a few dropping through. Not unexpected because of the size of the holes that I have. All right, so I've got about about a cup, maybe a little bit more, and you can see that I've left them kind of mounded up in the center. That does help airflow uh, over the surface of the pellets so that they catch a little bit faster. To light this, hand sanitizer. Cheap, inexpensive hand sanitizer. Whoa, 
more than I expected to came out and we'll get it lit to that light. Yep, oh yeah, that's going. That's the thing about hand sanitizer and alcohol, right? It is hard to see. So not a lot to see here for a few minutes, but what I will do is once the pellets have really caught on, then I'll come back and show you how well this is going to work. All right, just quick demonstration of using the stove with wood pellets. As I mentioned, I have about a cup, maybe a cup and a half on the plate, and the plate is in set on bars that went through the center set of holes from each side. I did put the smaller set of pot stands on top so I could put a pot on that is actually a little bit smaller than the stove itself. So just put that on on top, that being my Fire Maple 1.2 liter billy pot. And uh, yeah, you can see nice clean burning. And here's the other thing I found with the plate set at the level that I have it, it actually comes above or right at the top of the side feed port. So if you open the door on the side, uh, let me just pull this back a little bit and you'll be able to see that. I actually dropped the feed port down so I could get even more airflow in underneath the pellets. But you do have to remember, you've got to be above that lip right there. So if you're going to be doing this with pellets, make sure you have a set of holes that are there. Uh, if you're going to go any lower, then you're going to have pellets pour out. So in that case, you'll have to have the, the door shut. But for the way it's operating right now, it's, it's ideal. So I guess pellets do provide you another fuel on top of wood, on top of alcohol. I suppose you could use solid fuel or whatever else. It's certainly charcoal. I haven't mentioned that yet. Charcoal, it, I see this as an ideal small charcoal stove. I think that's what I'll call it. It's first strength is not wood, but rather charcoal. But uh, yeah, uh, I'll leave that for another demonstration at another time. Okay, so what I have to do now is I'm going to let these pellets burn out heat my water up, make some coffee with it, and then we'll close this video out. All right, just a few comments to close this video out on the Chinese-made folding box style wood stove. So, you know, this is a video I've wanted to make for quite some time. After I made the original video and received so many comments on this stove, it just showed to me just how popular a design this is. And I think the reason is, is because it's such an inexpensive stove. Not only is it inexpensive, but it is a good value stove but it's not a good stove, or not a great stove anyway. Does it function? It functions very well. It does everything you want of a wood stove, and for maybe a lot of people, maybe that's all they want, is the basic function and design of a stove like this. Does it excel at anything? Not particularly. Most of the other more well-known stoves on the market are much better constructed, and I think going to be much durable over the long term. I have heard people of people that have had multiple, multiple hot fires inside of these and the stove has stood up to it. I'm not going to argue that fact, but as I look at this stove that's had maybe 20 fires in it, I'm starting to see some signs that it's not going to last all that long. And that's okay with me because this is not an expensive stove, so I, I don't expect it to last forever. And some of the things I'm talking about is whether it's the quality of the stainless steel or not, this thing rusts really easy. So when I get it home, I'm going to have to clean it all out and then oil it all up with WD-40 or something else on the inside, inside to store it away just to prevent further rust. You know, this is small, but it's just a bit annoying is the fact that uh, it warps like this and you have to, and it moves back and forth. The other thing, I guess, that kind of disappointed me with the stove in the beginning is I had to make all these modifications myself to get it to function with all the versatility that it now has. Okay, yes, the new ones you can buy have all these modifications already built into them. So I guess that increases the versatility of the stove and makes it an even better value than this one would be. Overall, this is not a stove that I would pick as a first stove to go out with. But then again, I know just how fortunate I am and how many stoves I have. And yeah, so I understand if people are on a budget and they're looking for a good functioning wood stove, then maybe this is all they want. I did say this thing would excel with charcoal, and it does. It just absolutely is amazing the amount of heat you can generate and how well this works with charcoal in a large part because of that wide open bottom. However, I would recommend to people that if you start off with this, consider that a starter stove, a beginner stove, something that will give the principles of wooding, burning wood in a small wood stove like this. But keep your eyes on a better one because I think over time you'll find that there are limitations to this design that are improved upon by the more well-known, better name stoves. Okay, I think that's all I'm going to say about the stove at this time. I'm not against it. Please don't interpret this as I don't like this stove. 
I just think there are better stoves out there. Again, I recognize that it's a good value stove. It does everything you want from a wood stove. And for many people, it's all they'll ever need. And that's fine. It's just not for me. Okay. I hesitate to do this, but I'm going to open it up to comments. If you have any further suggestions for modifications to this stove, or if you can help me out on how it is that I'm using it wrong, with, especially with the grill across the top and those little locking bars, then please put those comments in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.